Hello there, my name's Holly and I'm a museum assistant with Aberdeen Art Galleries and Museums and today I'd like to tell you all about the fascinating, often tumultuous life of Elizabeth Blackwell and her pioneering victory in medicine. Aberdonian Elizabeth married Alexander Blackwell in the year 1735. He was a physician and although his education was sound, his qualifications were not. Only a few short years into their marriage, the legitimacy of his medical practice came under fire and the pair had to flee to London, but history soon repeated itself. Alexander had once worked in a publishing house and he used his experience to set up his own printing press. However, without ever having undertaken an apprenticeship nor belonging to a guild, he was charged with flouting the strict trade rules and he was forced to shut up shop. The Blackwells were now destitute and Alexander thrown in the debtor's jail. Out of desperation, Elizabeth recognised the need for a herbalist to depict and describe the exotics that were being imported from the New World. Having trained as an artist years before, she began to draw plants from life, so she headed to the Chelsea Gardens to draw each plant from life before engraving them onto copper and then hand colouring each of the 500 illustrations. Finally, a curious herbal was born. It was a resounding success and even recommended by the Royal College of Physicians. This piece of literature was the first of its kind, for it detailed which ailments could be cured by which herbals, and it advanced medicine for years to come. And so, the book worked a treat, and it released her husband from debtor jail. However, the pair's life careered from one disaster to the next, and after numerous more failed business attempts, the pair had to declare bankruptcy again, and Elizabeth forced to sell the rights to her book. Seizing an opportunity, Alexander headed to Sweden to become a royal physician, and he did extremely well. However, he tried to improve relations between Denmark, Sweden and England, and he was accused of conspiring against the Crown for it. On a sunny day in August 1747, Alexander was beheaded on the very day that Elizabeth had set sail from London to join him. As for Elizabeth, the remainder of her life is much of a mystery, but what we do know is her greatest legacy is by far in her botanical works that progress medicine for years to come.